Big tech companies have been fighting against ad blockers for years now because, well, for most of them, advertising makes up a significant portion of their quarterly revenue. But nobody has been taking the fight as far as Google has been. Some people even speculate that the phase out of manifest V2 extensions is primarily being pushed by Google in order to neuter the ad blocking ability of extensions in Chrome based browsers. Now, even though the decommissioning of manifest V2 in Chrome isn't scheduled until next year, that hasn't stopped YouTube from trying out new ways to prevent the service from working for anyone who is using an ad blocker. Over the past month, people have been reporting issues with the video service not working for them in different browser configurations and with different ad blockers installed. But it seems like YouTube got a little overzealous with their ad block detection because people who are using the Chrome browser with no ad blocking extensions installed at all have also been receiving the ad block is not allowed error and YouTube is enabled to function for them. Vanilla Chrome with no ad blockers installed is probably Google's preferred way for you to browse the web. But even the people who are playing by the rules are getting punished when they visit YouTube. However, Google is starting to get smarter about their tactics in the ad block wars. They recently started experimenting with injecting targeted ads directly into the video stream server side. So instead of ads being this separate thing that pops up in your video that you can skip through easily or just block automatically with an ad blocker, the ads are basically edited into the videos in real time, kind of like TV commercials. The in-stream advertising method bypasses the mechanisms of most ad blockers, and it even messes up add-ons like sponsor block which rely on community reported timestamp data to identify and automatically skip past the sponsored portion of a video. And it can also skip past intros, outros, and requests to subscribe and things like that that you might want to just manually skip. But since injecting ads into the video is making these videos arbitrarily longer at arbitrary parts of the video, all of that timestamp data that's been collected over the years might become useless. Now, if you've been keeping up with the ad blocker wars, you know that so far, the ad blockers have had the advantage because sites like YouTube will spend weeks and untold man hours and money making a change that temporarily breaks the ad blockers, and then the ad blocking community comes up with a way around big text fix in a few days. And all people have to do is update their extensions and their filter list, and then they can continue blocking ads like nothing. This in-stream video ads are a bit of a different beast because I imagine that YouTube is gonna do it by injecting the ads at certain keyframes in the video. So it's not even like YouTube has to spend a lot of processing power re-encoding every single video at all resolutions for every single person in order to show different ads to them. So the ad blockers are gonna to have to figure out how to detect when ads are being injected at, at what keyframes are being injected and how long the ads are and then fast forward the exact amount of time so that from the end user's perspective, they are having a fairly seamless viewing experience without seeing the ads. Now, I personally don't know enough about ad blocking technology to say exactly how this would be done, but what I just described to you, identifying where the ads are and fast forwarding through them automatically is basically how sponsor block works, except to block ads in the future, you're gonna to have to somehow figure out what the timestamps for the ads are in real time, because they're gonna be different, possibly for every single person that plays a video. And I would imagine that like most of the ads that we see now, the cut to the advertisement is gonna be somewhat abrupt. Uh, there would be a complete change of what's on the screen visually and a noticeable change to the audio tracks. 
So if you were to download the video and then import it into a video editor, you could probably just look at the audio waveforms alone to very quickly detect the vast majority of ads that are in a stream. Or better yet, you could use an automated program like Comskip, which is a free and open source commercial detector that people have been using for years to skip past commercials in recorded TV streams, or really any MPEG or H.264 video stream. So Comskip could be an awesome solution to block YouTube server-side ad injection because at least from an end user standpoint, like the standpoint of someone just watching YouTube videos, those injected ads feel very similar to how commercials are in recorded TV shows. And that's what this program was designed to handle. The only problem though, is I'm pretty sure this particular solution would require downloading every video that you wanna watch in its entirety first, and then you would run the Comskip program against that file to remove the ads. That might be a solution for shorter videos if you have fast internet and enough hard drive space, but this probably is not a realistic solution for most people, and it's gonna be even less realistic if YouTube can find a way to throttle YouTube downloading programs. So in order for ad blockers to combat <laughs> this new type of advertising and remain practical to use on YouTube, they're probably gonna to need to start detecting the ads visually or audibly, uh, or maybe identify when the ads would be inserted through some other means. But let's just assume that things get to a point where detecting ads with metadata like they do now no longer works. And so all the ads have to be detected perceptually. The solution for that would probably be some kind of machine learning tool that is trained to detect ads embedded into video streams. And that is a much more costly solution than the filter list solution that ad blockers are using now. At the end of the day, filter lists are basically just text files with keywords to detect in a site's HTML and sure, the site can update and obfuscate its HTML to bypass the block list. Facebook is notorious for doing this, but updating and then disseminating a block list is a much cheaper solution than creating, updating, and disseminating a machine learning tool or hosting that machine learning tool yourself, like the ad block community, or I guess the devs behind it, hosting this tool, and then letting everyone who's using the ad blocker access it through an API to detect ads. That's gonna be really expensive, and you know I would imagine that a lot of the ad blockers are gonna wanna start charging money. You know, The free ad blockers, at least, will wanna start charging money uh, to at least cover their cost of hosting the machine learning tool. Um, and you know, that might be the only solution for a lot of people, like the remote API solution, uh, because a lot of these so-called AI tools, they still require a tremendous amount of processing power that most end users aren't gonna have in their phones or laptops or even desktops unless they have a modern graphics card. And that's part of the reason why the largest AI tools are run on these massive server farms. And if the ad blocking arms race really does shift into the AI world, then I would imagine big tech companies would start using their more powerful AI to fight against AI ad blockers. And this is why I think the battle could end up shifting into big tech's favor. They are the ones with the server farms, they have millions of times more compute power, and they could do things like produce AI-generated ads, or better yet, just do single pixel poison attacks to the ads that they already have, you know, the ads that other people are making and then paying YouTube to run on their site. And then when the AI-powered ad blockers are seeing the poison that Google adds to the other company's ads, or they use those poisoned ads for training data to figure out what an ad is, then the AI ad blocker breaks. And in fact, the breaking of the ad blocker 
might cause them to do things like block legitimate content on the page that you're actually trying to look at instead of the ads. And when that happens, I think a lot of people are gonna start abandoning those extensions because a lot of people won't even realize that it's YouTube's fault. YouTube is actively sabotaging uBlock Origin or whatever ad blocker they're using. You know, They'll just think, oh, this is malware now and <laughs> delete it from their browser. We may very well be going back to how things were in the early web where most web pages are covered in ads, except in this cyberpunk dystopia, the ads will be embedded right into the content and safeguarded with big tech pixel poisoning to defeat perceptual ad blockers.